Toyota offers several on-demand all-wheel drive systems. Is one really better than another? We take a closer look on dirt, snow, and pavement on this episode of Driving Sports TV. Please, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, hit that button right now. And for those of you that are already subscribed, thank you very much. You make episodes like this one possible, and we hope to do many more in the future. In this video, we're going to focus on the all-wheel drive systems available in the new 2019 RAV4 and the upcoming 2020 Highlander. For these vehicles, there are currently three different options. All-wheel drive with active torque control, dynamic torque all-wheel drive, and electronic on-demand all-wheel drive with intelligence. This last one is a hybrid-only solution, a similar system of which is available on the new Prius. Some of these systems have been available on earlier models, and I'll note that where applicable. Let's dig in. The most basic system that Toyota currently offers is called all-wheel drive with active torque control. This was the system that was on the 2019 Highlander we reviewed recently. It's also on the 2018 Sienna, as well as the 2018 RAV4, as the only non-hybrid all-wheel drive option. With the 2019 RAV4, and starting with the 2020 Highlander, this is now the basic entry-level all-wheel drive option. So what is it? Despite what they call it, this is not a proper torque vectoring system. That's the marketing department getting a little too excited. This is instead a basic power to the front with open diffs all around setup. The center coupling does engage when power is needed to the back, which is then sent to both wheels evenly. It does use wheel sensors to brake wheels that are spinning freely, which redirects power to the opposite wheel, uh, the one that presumably has grip. With the Highlander we tested, we found that this system was effective enough to tackle even rugged, rock-covered roads. It may not have been the most confidence-inspiring setup, but it did the job and worked effectively even in the snow. Would it be our first choice in deep snow? Well, probably not. But for going over passes or hitting trailheads, it's more than adequate. In fact, the biggest limitation is actually just ground clearance. To see more about this system in action, watch our full review of the 2019 Highlander linked here. The next system we're going to dive a lot deeper into. This is the new and more exciting system. It's called Dynamic Torque All-Wheel Drive. Currently, it's offered only on limited and adventure trims with the new 2019 RAV4. It'll also be available on upper trims in the upcoming 2020 Highlander. That was just announced. For details on this system, first we flew out to the Bridgestone Winter Driving School in Colorado to drive the new 2014 RAV4 Adventure, and we also met up with David Lee from Toyota. Out back, the new RAV4's torque vectoring system really utilizes a new differential, and it has clutches on either side, and they are computer controlled. So as before, we can send power to the back on and off as needed, but when it is going to that back differential or rear differential, now those two clutches on each axle can interact with each other to send torque to one side or the other. It's more proactive than the previous system's version where in order to stop spinning wheels, we had to only use the brakes. Now we can use these clutches to anticipate a little better. Wheel slip conditions are probably your primary cause for shifting torque side to side. However, the system does do a great job when you are cornering too. And so if you're initiating a left-hand turn, the weight's gonna shift to your right on the vehicle. We can send more torque to that right wheel or vice versa. And then once again, as you're maybe trans transversing or tra traversing your way through uh, some slippery conditions or rougher terrain, if a wheel starts to spin, we can instantly shift torque to the other wheel that's grounded. Also, it's important to note that it can only send up to 50% of available torque to the rear wheels. But as you can see with our standing acceleration slip test on ice, when it chooses to actually send power to the back is a complete mystery. Regardless of drive mode, even with traction control off, we could never get power to the back wheels from a launch. We did ask David from Toyota to explain why it didn't ever want to send power back there, even in very icy, slick conditions. This was his response. The RAV is going to react to whatever conditions you're driving in. So if you are at a stop and you launch from a stop, initially it should try to put power to all four wheels, but then based on how much traction you're getting, it may shift front to back based on wheel spin. 
and it's possible in icy conditions like we're out here today at the Bridgestone Winter Driving School that the back axle may not have had enough weight on it to get that much traction, and so the system was compensating and putting power to the front axle. So to make sure this wasn't just a location-specific result, we did the exact same test with a RAV4 Limited all-wheel drive on a gravel road. So I'm gonna put it into drive mode here. This is all normal at this point. Normal, 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 everything is normal. And I'm just gonna mosh the throttle and see what we have for acceleration. And go. Okay, I see disrupted gravel and it is just for the two front tires. There was zero work done by the rear wheels uh, on that run. Great, now let's go ahead and we'll put it into drive. This time I will put it into mud and sand. Now what mud and sand does is it allows for slip because in muddy sandy conditions, you wanna be able to actually spin your wheels a little bit to get you that momentum to get out. So this basically disables the first level of traction control uh, and it really should send power to the back immediately because slip is expected. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing and go. Ooh, lots of spin in the front. Was there anything in the back there? I didn't feel it. No, gravel, no disruption to the back tires, just two little wear spots in the front where the two front tires tried to dig out. Luckily, we've done a couple of other cars in the exact same location, so we do have comparisons we can make. Here is the 2019 Hyundai Santa Fe with H-Track. Watch the rear wheel. There is definitely power going back there. It launches and then has a slight spin and it gets more grip, very solid all-wheel drive start. Next, there's the 2019 Mazda CX-5, and you'll see it actually has a very similar result to the Toyota, but even more dramatic as traction control off really allows it to spin those front wheels. And for good measure, here is a completely stock Subaru WRX STI launching in the snow. And this is a Mercedes S-Class. So what does this kind of testing really mean to you? Well, it means that launches in slick conditions will not feel as confident as they could or should. In addition to all the standard drive modes, you know, eco, sport, and normal, which really just handle throttle um, response, RAV4s also have new off-road modes, similar to dual X mode found in the new Subaru Forester. Again, David Lee. RAV4 models actually have a couple of different ways that they can assist their drivers. One that is standard across all the grades is a multi-terrain select system. So if you're operating along and you're going to get off-road, let's say you're into a dirt road and there's some negative traction conditions, and you want to change the amount of wheel spin that your system allows, you can select a couple of different modes. One is mud sand, and if you select that, what that's going to do is it's going to tell your RAV's computer to send more traction to the back, but also allow your RAV4's, all four of its wheels, to have a little bit more wheel spin. It'll still try to match them, but we're going to let you do a little bit of a burnout there to get you through those muddy and sandy conditions. Opposite side of the spectrum from that is the dirt and rock mode. And when you engage that, it's gonna send more power to the back axle again. It's gonna bias more back there. However, unlike mud sand, we're gonna reduce your wheel spin greatly so that you don't tear up your tires on sharp objects. To test out these drive modes, I headed to the mountains in the Pacific Northwest. First, to do a little on-throttle ascending S-curve. We'll just jump right into the mud and sand setting and see what it does. I have the car put in mud and sand, which turns off traction control and the collision systems. It should also just automatically put more torque to the back. Um, how much torque? We'll find out. Let's go ahead and floor it. Get a little bit of wheel spin there. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna throttle in. Let's see if that back, yep, kicks out a little bit. Definitely on the exit there. Okay, so what did I feel? Well, it definitely um, reduces the amount of traction control, which is good because you want less traction control in a situation like that. I could also feel those back wheels getting a little bit of torque on the outside to kind of help rotate me around, but it wasn't a lot. It's not like the Honda Pilot with its IVTM4 system that puts a lot of power and torque to the back wheels. This one, definitely feeling like it's there trying to get the system to kind of catch up and to kind of give me a little more control, but it's not really giving me what I would call power in the back. As we can see in the playback, there is some power going to the back and the system does allow for slippage, but it is minimal. Those rear wheels aren't really kicking up much of anything. 
Of course, we also did the same corner in normal mode with all the nannies turned on, and that just stopped all the fun immediately. It tracked surely and solidly uh, with no drama whatsoever. Next, let's try out a modest rock climb. Since I last took a vehicle down here, it's been about three months. In that time, we've had probably 10 feet of snow up here. That changes things. Changes the rock patterns, changes the stump sticking out of the road. Basically, this isn't the same road it once was. So <laughs> honestly, I, I hope we can make this. So I've now switched it into rock and dirt. Uh, let's turn that camera back on. I'm gonna put it on auto so I can kind of see what's on around me a little bit more. I can see the stump is right there. So what I'm trying to do is avoid having my oil pan get ripped out because that would end this adventure very quickly. So you gotta go real slow. Oh boy. Is this a good idea? Oh. Wow, so far it's, it's doing great. And, and would you take a RAV4 on anything more extreme than this? Probably not. At least not while you're still making payments. Come on, power. Oh, 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 it's showing me slippage on that front right wheel. Oh, 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 it sent more power to the other wheels. That's good. That's exactly what it's supposed to be doing. Oh, come on, you can do this. Ah. Now, I'm sure if I just floored it, I'd go very quickly here, but the last thing we want to do is to come down with our weight on the oil pan or the rear diff or anything else that could potentially explode up here. And we did it! Ha! Of course, now we have to go down. That's its own tricky thing. In this application, the system did really well. For an on-demand all-wheel drive setup, it did a good job of shuffling power around to the wheels that could really use it. And a road like this is probably the most extreme off-roading a RAV4 owner would attempt. So this new system is technically more capable than the older, simpler system. But in practice, there really was very little difference in what it was able to accomplish. Unlike Honda's IVTM4 system, or even Hyundai's H-Track, it doesn't really add excitement to the cornering capabilities. In fact, I could hardly tell it was even there. And when it came to climbing the rocks, both this and the older system were able to accomplish a climb that was well beyond what buyers would likely ever encounter. Finally, there is the hybrid option. Electronic on-demand all-wheel drive with intelligence, or AWDI for short. This system is available on the new RAV4 Hybrid, and a similar system is available on the Prius AWD. This is technically a very exciting setup, as it relies on a dedicated rear axle 54 horsepower electric motor to provide power to the back. There is no drive shaft connecting the back to the front. That means that torque can be engaged based on requirements without having to worry about what the front wheels are doing. When slip is detected, it engages the rear motor to assist. But the scenarios in which it engages and the amount of power it provides is limited on paved surfaces. In practice, hybrid all-wheel drive just really wasn't so great when we tested it on the 2018 RAV4 Hybrid. It even says in the manual, do not take this system off-road. Even when I was mid-slide, all-wheel drive did not kick in. Let's go take a look at this. All I see are the two front wheels powering, powering, powering into oblivion. Thankfully, that's not the end of the story. When we filmed the original RAV4 review, we weren't able to get answers from Toyota as to why the 2018 drivetrain was so limited. We thought, at the time, it was because the rear motor couldn't handle the load. It took us almost a year, but we finally got an answer from Toyota. Turns out, yeah, it was just software. So out back on the new RAV4, the, the MGR, or motor generator rear, is essentially mechanically the same as the previous generation, but it has been retuned or its operation parameters have been revised to match the front end of that new vehicle. And once again, if you drove an 18 versus a 19 RAV hybrid, you'd see a huge difference in not only performance and acceleration, but also traction, as the new hybrids also have that trail button up on the dash that also tells that rear electric motor to get busy and give me some rear axle traction. So they tweaked the software, and now it's more capable off-road with the 2019 RAV4. 
A system very much like this one is now available in the new Toyota Prius. On the new Prius all-wheel drive, a tiny 7-horsepower motor is engaged from speeds of 0 to 6 miles per hour. That helps with starts. It also engages as needed at speeds up to 43 miles per hour. Like the hybrid all-wheel drive RAV4, this is a very mild all-wheel drive system. Fun fact, both these systems actually use the older nickel-metal hydride batteries instead of the more popular lithium ions because nickel-metal hydride actually holds charges better at lower temperatures. So these are intended to be used in cold weather. So that's our look at the three on-demand all-wheel drive systems currently offered by Toyota. If you're considering any of these vehicles, it's important to really see and understand what you're getting and where it can be beneficial. To recap, all-wheel drive with active torque control, the most basic system, adds all-wheel drive to a daily driver that occasionally may encounter snow or dirt. It is a solid system that provides excellent value. The next step up, dynamic torque all-wheel drive, takes the same approach, but adds in some torque vectoring capability. This system noticeably improves handling at speeds between roughly 20 and 40 miles per hour, with other benefits being pretty transparent to the driver. Finally, the hybrid system is a glimpse at the future of all-wheel drive systems. If you want a RAV4 hybrid or a Prius with all-wheel drive, this is what you get. It's an on-demand system that engages only occasionally. So while it does add some capability, that capability is very limited. Is there a use case scenario we didn't consider when looking at the new Toyota Dynamic Torque All-Wheel Drive System? Post a comment below, or just let us know what you think. We'd love to hear from you. Also, please like and share this video, and most importantly, subscribe. We are on track to hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube this year, and we need your help to make it happen. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.